Ladies and gentlemen, as Ronnie said, my name is Christoph, and um, just going to tidy up a bit. Um, <clears throat> I think most of you know me, at least uh, I know most of you, and um, I hope it's not because I stole a bottle of wine yesterday at the restaurant. Yeah. Um, I hope it's because of my presentation maybe last year or because of other things um, <clears throat> that are positive. Uh, as Marco, I think it was Marco, huh? he said uh, it's important uh, you remember somebody by. So, uh, besides wine, I like to teach. I'm teaching in Germany at the FYM University, um, and how could it otherwise be? I'm teaching turnaround management, uh, which is my topic here today as well. And it's also my passion. So, um, it's a quite difficult topic. It's uh, it's very big. It's very um, it's a lot of literature to, to go through um, to develop what I'm developing here a standard for turnaround management. Um, so I think you can only um, survive uh, this long time studying and reading and reading if you're really passionate about it. Well, there is nothing to think. Well, that's um, perfect. Perfect. Um, so as I said, I'm talking about corporate restructurings. And corporate restructurings occur when this is a life cycle of a company. Here we found the company. Here uh, it hits rock bottom, that's insolvency. So usually the corporate restructuring should occur somewhere in between there. Okay. So the company is going down, uh, and if nothing happens, it's going to fail. A lot of times that's the case. Actually, most most times that's the case. Especially, of course, uh, the more you get here to this end, the higher the chance, of course, that you fail. Um, and current practices that at some point you kick out the manager or the management team, uh, you hire somebody different, and uh, the later in time we get, or the later it uh, gets, the chance is higher that you hire a lawyer or something. Who here in the room would um, say that they could turn around maybe the company? Who would, um, yeah, who would say, uh, okay, I have the courage to do it? Let's say we are in the airline industry. Ronnie, right, you need to listen first. <laughs> I, I mean, we need to create the case first. We're, we are uh, we're in the airline industry. And let's say we're uh, some low cost provider, maybe like EasyJet or whatever. Um, but we don't call it EasyJet, uh, it's called CrashJet or something. Okay? <laughs> Um, so here, this is our, our little uh, company, this is where we are, we're going down because we've never really had a good reputation, we're cheap, but we're not really that much on the quality side maybe, and one of our airplanes crashes. Well, that is a, that's always a big problem for, uh, for airlines, of course, and um, because we want to make it a more a bit more dramatic, another one crashes shortly after. Yeah. So now we're here. Who would still fly with that uh, low cost provider? I would. So now I'm asking would somebody here in the room maybe try to turn around the company, take over the company, the management, and try to turn it around? Well, not that scenario. I, I did turn around. All right. Well, this is a pretty severe case. Uh, this is a pretty heavy case. So, and, and most people would probably say, I'm, I'm not going to do it. So, what I did, now I developed a method how you can even turn around these companies. Let's take a look on the, on the bit more on the project management side. And um, I saw Roland Garais when he was here on, on Monday. Uh, last year we had an interesting discussion. He said, um, if I remember right, the projects are never longer than three years or something. I think he said something like two years. One year. Oh, that is that is very short. Well, um, turnarounds might be longer than that. So, so, so Roland Garais might uh, maybe disagree with me a bit, uh, but that's fine. In summary, now I've probably confused you a bit and maybe lost one or another. I know how that is. Um, in summary, it is a guided method to turn around the company that got into a crisis situation. That is the simple saying I can say about this. A method that does not only focus on one particular area, but on all, or treats all causes. 
that uh, led into the crisis situation in a controlled and structured way. Um, <clears throat> my research uh, that got go went into this um, into this process, or into this uh, not process, into this method, into the standard, um, based on about 150 analyzed case studies. Um, where they go in, I'll show you in a second. Um, of course, uh, literary sources, uh, books, uh, pretty much everything made written in that area. Um, there is an interview series, I'm still conducting that, of uh, turnaround managers, and I remember last year uh, Rodney uh, told me one important thing is you need to go out there and, and, and talk to the people. Um, and that is what I'm doing right now, I already did that in the past a bit as well. Um, so. These interviews and the, the opinion of restructuring experts, of course, goes into there. I'm not, I'm not just doing that alone. I'm, I'm doing that with uh, actually a lot of companies right now that are uh, kind of interested and that are willing to support this as well. And there will be a survey. So, to make it a bit uh, more complicated, this is a strength of the standard models. Okay? Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to, to have a look at it, to read through it. You, you start on the left and you go to the right. This is how you work through the process, in general. Um, you have different stages. You have different stages. We have different processes. Sub-processes. So in those processes, we have little sub-processes again. Yeah. So for example, in the diagnostic review of the company, um, in the evaluation, evaluation phase of that uh, diagnostic review, we might add, for example, um, came out that uh, the image, the brand image, is not repairable. Yeah. Uh, in our case, uh, jet, what, what do you call jet air or jet airways? No, 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 not jet, crash. Uh, crash airways or something. Um, as a not repairable brand image. Yeah. We cannot really offer flights anymore under that name. But we have uh, some financial structure. That might be a possible outcome or review. Really. Yeah. So, um, it's not too late yet, we can still do something. And we have support processes, they accompany the whole process. And that is, as I mentioned, there's change management, there's risk control, there are communication, paper, communication procedures, and there is, of course, also process called directing the terminal. So that's it, total again. So, in our little example, Mm, let's say we have analyzed the company and uh, we're now in the evaluation of that analysis. Yeah. So that means we already know what the situation is in the company, we know the financial resources, we know pretty much everything, we know how the management it works and stuff like that. Uh, I will focus on the, on the yellow frame now, make it a bit brighter, I've minimized the processes that are not very important yet, just to demonstrate a little bit how this works. So, we have this situation, we have a non-repairable brand image, it's going to end good financial resources, there's going to be a sub-process for that in the standard. And the standard is then going to tell us, in that case, one possible way out would be the acquisition of another company. It's going to tell us that, because in one of those 150 cases that went into it, this is what happened. And in fact, it actually did happen. I think it was Air Trend, something American, kind of so on. Um, they bought another competitor, changed their name to the competitor's name, and kept operating on it. So that is a strategic way out. But at the same time, it's also maybe going to tell us all there are some uh, emergency, emergency procedures to be taken. Yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, Finding a company or whatever a possible company, I don't want to go into, into that too much detail. There is uh, maybe some risk that we need to consider. Put a look at this one here. Yeah. Um, and there might be some communication procedures that we need to take, take out. Now, there might be somebody who to inform at this point in time. Um, for example, uh, if we have a sound financial structure here, if we have some, some financial resources, uh, this is some, uh, something we might want to inform the stakeholders about, uh, so that they support this process. It's something good. Uh, and I can only say, 
uh, this is extremely important, inform them about something good. Don't lie about something uh, that is maybe not there, yeah? or uh, don't uh, try to make uh, the company look better than it is. It would not do us any good. Yeah? But a regular communication, a regular honest communication, has probably the biggest chance of support. So this is what the communication procedures are for on the bottom. So to take a broader look at it, um, at the whole standard, and in, in this case again, we have the sub-process that told us um, this is the situation. We were led to strategic restructuring that told us uh, buying as a company might be a solution, it might be different solutions. I'm just following this uh, yellow track here now. Um, it also told us in the communication procedures there's something to take care of, risk management. If we go one step farther, um, strategic restructuring might lead us again to risk, risk control, maybe we need to update uh, a risk log or something, or there might be a new risk arising, or something like that. Um, and there might be uh, some process improvements to be done, but I'm going to follow the yellow line, okay, not, not the line to the other support processes. I'm going to follow the main direction. So in order to, for example, buy it as a company, we need to get approval of the board. Yeah? In my standard, I'm, I'm, I'm introducing a turnaround board uh, that compromises with the turnaround management team, of course, maybe of uh, key shareholders, maybe some stakeholders as well, as well uh, to involve them more into the process. Um, let's say they approve, so we will buy another company. Um, then the whole thing goes to planning, it needs to be planned, how are we going to do it? In order to do it uh, the best way, we will have, probably have to include some change management. It's going to tell us that. Um, maybe as to CM6, it's a sub-process in change management. Um, then we include that into the planning, we go back to the planning, um, we go back to strategic restructuring in the end, if the plan is done, and this is the strategy that we follow. So we can go on like this, it's just a little um, micro universe that you created for a very specific case. Um, of course you can challenge that, I just want to demonstrate how it works. Yeah. At last I'm going to show you how the same looks in my head. Uh, this is how. Um, it's a bit more uh, complicated than I just demonstrated. Here you have all the different processes and sub-processes that exist. And um, all they are linked together. Uh, of course it's a very complicated model. Um, but in order to treat every possible situation that can happen, this is, this is what you have. This is what you get. Um, and we quite had quite an interesting discussion yesterday, I, I, I told um, some of my fellow students here about this uh, project, and um, I told them, well, if you analyze 10 cases, you might be amazed of the things that can go wrong. Uh, if you analyze 150, you see patterns. Okay? Things repeat themselves. And that is exactly what happens, of course. Um, you, cannot, you cannot treat every, every case with this method, but you can probably treat most of them. And, um, Depending on how many situations uh, you include in here, uh, you will find a way out. And this is exactly, I think, what um, what treats the problem that occurs or that is that is going on right now. And often people don't even know the possibilities. People don't even know what happened. Yeah? Uh, in other cases, what can I do? What are my possibilities? And uh, also, what do I need to take care of in a certain situation? Who do I need to inform? Do I need to inform somebody? Um, what possible risks are there? The standard is going to tell you all that. Well, that is uh, my presentation for today, and I think I'm the last. So I'm going to let you. Uh, yep, let you uh, go home. And uh, yeah, there, if there are questions, uh, please. Uh, <laughs>